Today, we're going to look at two of the prophets to get a sense of what their message was like. The two prophets we're going to look at today are Amos and Hosea. Now, Amos and Hosea both worked and were active in the northern kingdom before they were defeated by the Assyrians. So they were speaking to people in Israel and the kings and leaders in Israel in the mid-700s B.C. Both prophets focused on how Israel was trusting themselves and their power and forgot about God and how they had fallen away from God's will and were continuing to be unfaithful. So the prophet Hosea starts out with God telling Hosea to marry a woman named Gomer, who has a reputation of being a woman who sleeps around a lot. And Hosea said to God, I don't want to marry her. She lives like a whore. I'll be the laughingstock of everybody around. And God says, I know, I want you to marry her anyway. So Hosea does. And shortly after they're married, he finds out that she's pregnant, but he's not the father. And Hosea wants to send her away. And God says, nope, do not send her away. Take her in, take care of her and forgive her. And she says, oh, I promise I'll never do it again. I will be faithful to you. The child is born. And then not too long later, she does it again. She comes back pregnant by somebody else, and Hosea is not the father. And Hosea says to God, I want to send her away. And God says, don't send her away. Forgive her. Take her back. And she says, I'm so sorry. I've been unfaithful to you. I promise I will never, never do it again. Just take me back and be good to me, and I promise I will be faithful. So Hosea does. And a third time, guess what happens? She does it again. She comes back pregnant. Hosea wants to send her away. God says, take her back, forgive her. She says, I promise to be faithful. And Hosea is outraged. And he says to God, how often do I have to take back my wife who was unfaithful to me? And she promises she'll never do it again. And yet she ends up being unfaithful time and time again. And God said to Hosea, does this sound familiar? This is exactly what it's been like for me and the people of Israel. So Hosea goes on to tell a message of God's grace and God's love and God's forgiveness and the importance of God's people being faithful, the importance of God's people repenting of their sinfulness and the ways they've gone after other gods and the importance of their commitment to remain living as God's people. But of course they didn't. And yet, God is faithful to them, even when they are not faithful to God. This is a theme that shows up in many of the prophets, and as we will learn with Jesus and all the life of Christianity in the New Testament, it's a message of grace and hope and forgiveness, knowing that we're not going to be perfect, but that doesn't give us permission to go off and do whatever we want and just demand forgiveness. There are consequences for when we mess up. Yet this message here is a message of hope, for God's people who continue to be unfaithful. The prophet Amos addresses a different direction where Amos challenges Israel's desire to go to war and to make alliances with other countries and also their inability, their, their desire to not take care of the poor and the powerless, but instead the way in which the people, the, the leaders in Israel had focused on getting more and more power for themselves. So there's a short passage I'll read from Amos chapter 5, where Amos, speaking to Israel, says, speaking for God, Amos says, I hate and I despise your feasts. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. And even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fatted beasts, I won't even look on. Take away the noise of your songs. The melody of your harps I will not listen to, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Now, what Amos is speaking to is the way in which God's people had focused on going through the motions of being religious without living lives that are faithful. They continued to let the poor suffer, the hungry go hungry, and all sorts of other forms of injustice were going on. And Amos says, God wants justice, not simple religious observance. So even though the prophets spoke a long time ago, they have a significant voice for us today. In our modern times, in the 21st century, we still face the kinds of injustice and unfairness that the prophets spoke about. God's will has not changed. God still wants us to do justice and to live out God's ways of peace. 
Some of the issues we face today are widespread racism, inequality, hating of people, those uh, uh, hating of people who are different from us, and sometimes blaming victims for their suffering. These are areas and times where the voice of the prophets need to be heard today. We are challenged to remain faithful to God and to challenge those of us who have power to carry out justice. During the civil rights movement in the 1960s, Dr. Martin Luther King continued to read the words of the prophets to the American people. In fact, at his tomb in Atlanta, at the King Memorial, these words from Amos are written in a reflecting pool. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. The voice of the prophets continues to be very, very important for us to both challenge those in power and to challenge us for the ways in which we like to settle for a religion of going through some motions and saying some words, but not living the faith and without living out God's will. So the prophets continue to challenge us. It's a voice that continues to need to be heard. The specifics of the issues they addressed in their time might be different than the specifics we face today, but the general issues are the same. The ways in which we turn our backs on God and we are unfaithful and we go off after other gods. And today we might not worship Baal or Astarte, but we worship money and things we have and things we want and power and ourselves. And all these things take the place of God in our lives. So the voice of the prophets is one that we need to continue to hear. The voice of the prophets challenge us, and they bring us a promise. Amos challenges us to seek justice and to live out God's will. Hosea, Isaiah, and other prophets continue to bring us words of hope and God's promise of forgiveness and faithfulness to us, even when we are not faithful to God. So the prophets are important. The prophets help us understand that even though we mess up, God has room for us to come back. God loves and forgives. And what God seeks of us is to live lives that are righteous and faithful.